Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are at day 12 of our time of prayer and consecration. For those of you that may be tuning in for the first time at the beginning of this year, we have been doing a week of praying and fasting every month to try to help build and stretch our fasting muscles. We were doing um, from Sunday to Monday, we'd start on Monday from 6 to 12, and then we would increase by an hour increment each day, ending on Sunday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. But when it came around to July, and it was time to do the prayer and fasting period, I just didn't feel in my spirit to move forward with it. There was just like a hold. Like I, w- I felt like I was in a holding pattern. And I, th- the Lord told me or shared with me, impressed upon me, um, to do two weeks in the month of August and we would fast straight for the two weeks and really press in to God, right? Um, one thing about what I know that I'm called to do is I know that part of my call is foundational. is to help people with the foundations. It's to help people gain understanding of the word. It's to teach people and really walk people through this walk, right? Not just giving encouragement, not just giving, not just sharing my testimony, but really to help develop people in the way that they should go. So I think for me, when I, um, when I first came to Christ, I didn't necessarily have discipleship classes, right? I didn't have, they didn't have, my church at the time did not have discipleship classes. And I was just kind of figuring things out on my own, right? Between attending different conferences and listening to different um, speakers that were invited to the church I listened to them outside of those functions and those events, and I started learning quickly, right? I I still don't, you know, I will never stand in a place where I go, I know everything. No, I don't know everything, but for sure, a lot of that helped me grow quickly, and, you know, the like I was saying yesterday, there was a pursuit of God that I had that no one could stop me. Like, not no one could stand in the way of me and God. And it's not that they could stand in the way now, but there was just this pursuit of God where my intention was, I want God and nothing else. I need to know who this this person is. I need to know everything about him. I'm going to be in full pursuit of God. And it came to a point where, like I've been sharing in different periods of time throughout this fast, where I had to learn to trust God in my wilderness season and it was one of the hardest things I've had to do. I think learning how to trust God when he's already given an answer, meaning if you ask God, okay, God, um, I need a promotion on my job. You know, I'm searching for a promotion on my job. And God is like, yes, you're going to get a promotion. I think it's easier to trust God when you have his yes, but it's more difficult to trust God when he's trying to, he's trying to just, um, stick his hand out and you're supposed to put your hand in his hand and follow him. 
It's easier to trust God with a yes to something that you're looking for, to some sort of increase, to some sort of change in your situation, in the relationships around you. When you have that that relationship with God and God gives you a yes, you're holding on to that yes to fuel your, your trust in God. But when it is that God is asking you to step out first before he tells you anything, it becomes a little bit more difficult to trust God. And if we if we read in James chapter 2, oh, that's what I was doing. I was pulling that up. If we read in James chapter 2 about Abraham and Abraham and his faith and his works, scripture tells us that faith without works is dead. It's dead. So you can have all the faith in the world. You can believe, you can hope, you can you can lean into your faith, but without the works, it is dead. And what that means is without the obedience, your faith is dead. It doesn't mean anything. So if God tells you, oh, go up to this man or to this woman in the grocery store and ask them if they believe in God or ask them, have they been having a hard time? Do you need help? Whatever it is he asks you to say to them. If he tells you to go and do that and you your your whole personality is like, no, your whole characteristic is like, no, I don't do that. I don't go up to random strangers and talk to random strangers. How can you not obey that simple of a command, but yet you want God to turn around and bless you with a house and bless you with a car and bless you with an increase and bless you with a promotion and bless you with, and just bless you, bless you, bless you, but you're not willing to do anything. God wants to see our obedience, no matter how small, no matter how big. The smaller it is, the better it is for you. Because once he asks for something big, once he asks for you to step out in a manner in which you have never stepped out before, it doesn't necessarily make it easier, but you're quicker to give God a yes. You're quicker to obey because you've been doing the little things. We can't be partial to what God is asking us to do, to what he's telling us to do, how he's, he wants us to, to, to move and minister. We can't be partial to it. And as, and as unfortunate, but because of the world that we live in, we tend to pick and choose what we do and what we don't do based on our feelings, based on our desires, based on our wants, based on a whole lot of things. We pick and choose what we do and don't want to do. And it doesn't work like that with God. If God says jump, you say how high. If God says run, you say how far. In order for us to really see the supernatural in action, faith and works go together. You can sit here and say, I believe God. I'm a believe God. I trust God. I'm leaning on God. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Okay, that's fantastic. Do so. What has he told you to do that you have not? Because as much as I believe God, there's a lot of work for me to do. I have yet to see some things happen because I'm still trying to build, write, complete, start things that God has has ignited in me, has oppressed upon me. And, And I don't think we realize that our obedience sometimes or our disobedience hinders our progress it causes delay it causes delay when when i when i started this prayer line i started as a conference call 
People would have to dial in and, and we'd be praying on the telephone. And then at some point or the other, I think it was in 2020 that God was like, I need you to go on Facebook Live. And I was like, absolutely not. Because I was not, I, Joy, was not comfortable putting my face out on social media. I don't even, I still don't really care about social media, but I didn't want my face out there. I didn't really want to be like having to engage online. And it, for me, it was coming out of my comfort zone, right? And then eventually, months later, almost a whole year, but months later, I started doing it. I started doing it and I became more and more comfortable. And I don't know what that was for. I don't know what God's plan is in, in, in me doing social media, in me speaking on social media and praying and doing all of these things. I have no idea what his plan is, but it, it's about me being obedient. Was there delay? Yes. But there are plenty of other times God was like, go, do, where it didn't even, it wasn't even a split second thought. And I went and I did. And that's the type of obedience that God is searching for. He wants us to have, right? When you think about Abraham in the instance when God told him, I need you to take your son up, um, I think it's Mount Morib. I need you to take your son up on the mountain and sacrifice him. And Abraham was like, okay, son, we're going on a journey. He didn't even bat two eyelashes. He he said, son, we're going on a journey. And he took his son up there. And his son had no idea what was getting ready to happen. But his son was helping him to set up the altar. To put the sticks, to put the pieces of wood. To prepare the altar. And God saw how far Abraham was willing to go. And he gave him a ram in the bush. An animal appeared that Abraham could then sacrifice to God instead of sacrificing his child on the altar. Because that was not God's intent. God's intent was to see if Abraham was going to be obedient. If he was going to follow through even though it was his only son. And God then saw that Abraham was going to be obedient. And then he called him or he counted it unto him righteous. And he was called a friend of God. I don't know about you, but my whole desire is to be a daughter and a friend to God. I want to obey in such a way that can't nothing disrupt the, the move of God in my life. I want to obey in such a way that when I walk into places, that minute that God says go, I can go. Whatever is stopping me now, I want it removed. So if you know that uh, the call of God on your life, if you have any idea to what the call of God ensues on your life, and it's going to require you to travel, and it's going to require you to um, be mentally fit, and it's going to require you to um, have yourself together in such a way, you need to begin to prepare. So if you are on the heavier side, you eat, you tend to eat a little bit unhealthy, do the work to get down your weight so that you can travel, so that you can go to the places necessary. So you're not tired. When you come to a point where you're ministering to multiple people, you're not tired and you're not the one needing a seat. That you can still minister to people effectively no matter what. 
Go to the doctor. Check on your levels. Where where are my vitamin levels? What do I need to be eating? Not necessarily even taking supplements. What do I need to eat to get my levels back up? Okay, my mind, my mind just keeps bouncing all over the place or it keeps going back to that traumatic experience as a child or you know, whatever happened on that job, whatever happened in that past relationship, I just can't get it out my mind. And because it's in my mind, it's in my spirit. And because it's in my spirit, it's in my soul. And because it's in my soul, I react when people say and do certain things. So I need to go see a therapist. I need to work out these issues. I need to work on becoming whole so that I can be effective in my obedience. It's not just about obedience, but you also want to be effective in your obedience. Because Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, he was effective in his prayer life and how he moved. He was effective in how he saved, um, I guess it's his nephew, Because it was his brother's son. He saved his nephew from destruction. From God placing his hand down on where he lived. And destroying it. He saved his wife from trouble. Because he told the wife to say that she was his sister. And she didn't. Abraham was, was what he was effective in his ministry because of his obedience. A lot of us want to get to where God showed us that we're going to be, but we don't want to do the in-between work. The scut work, right? When doctors are, are, are trying to become doctors and they're residents, they're in their residential state, They're doing a lot of scut work. So they're the ones, okay, well, well, we're going to hold the suction, right? In the middle of surgery, we're going to hold the suction and we're going to do the cleaning of the wounds and we're going to do the, um, the sutras, the, um, what do you call it? When people have, um, wounds and they need to be closed, they're going to do that type of work until They get so good at that, then it's like, okay, I can give you more. I can give you more. God is working the same way. That's why your your, your obedience in the little things matters. Your obedience in the little things matters because then when it comes to bigger things, you can... The, the the better you respond in the smaller things is the quicker you'll respond in the bigger things and the more you'll be effective. If you're on stage and you're ministering and you're, 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 you're preaching or you're teaching the word of God and God tells you to stop and he points someone out to you and he tells you to call that person up and to minister to them, you will hear that and obey that if your obedience tracks. But you may hear that if your obedience doesn't track. You may hear that and you may go, okay, I'll I'll do it after I'm finished talking. And God is like, no, I need you to interrupt what you're saying now and do it now. What's more effective when God tells you to do it or after when you feel like doing it? The anointing is what comes to destroy the yoke. So if God is telling you to pursue someone and minister to them in the midst of you preaching or teaching, the anointing is here now for that person. We don't realize how much our obedience affects others. It affects others. It's not about how we feel. It's not about what we want to do. It's not about, oh, it's Wednesday and I don't do that on Wednesday. No. If God tells you to stop and minister to that homeless person on the side of the street, you're not going to do it because you don't want to touch them? That's how I used to be. I, I, I just, I would be like, here, here's the money, right? Like, and hand it off with the two fingers 
and just hope that they don't touch you. No, God loves everyone the same. He loved you when you were a sinner. He loved them as the, they're homeless. He loves the people in entertainment. He loves everyone the same. Whether they love him or not, that's a different story. But if he called you to minister to that homeless person on the side of the street, you go up to them. You ask them about Jesus. What else do you need? What kind of help do you need? You may know someone that can help them. Pray into their lives. Your obedience, you know, it's, it's, I forget where it says this, but your obedience is much better than your sacrifice. You can sacrifice your whole life and never obey, and it were to mean nothing. It would mean nothing because it's you're not listening to what God is saying. You're not responding to what he's saying. You might as well not even have relationship with him. Your obedience is required. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. James 2 tells us that. What good is it if your brother is starving and you got all the faith in the world, but you don't feed them anything? What good is it if they are cold and they need to be clothed And you don't cover them with anything. You can have all the faith in the world, but the works is what is required in tandem with that faith. You can just tell somebody that that don't have on any clothes. It's winter time wherever you live. And you know you see the homeless person on the street and they are freezing. And you're going to just tell them, go in peace. I would look at you and be like, that's not going to do me nothing. That's not a currency. That's not an article of clothing. That's not a piece of food. That's not going to do me anything. We must, our, our faith must be in tandem with our works. But our works require our, our obedience. You do not want to be seen as someone that is foolish. I believe God. I believe God. You've been believing God for 20 years. And God, nothing ain't happened because you ain't did nothing. That was terrible English. Nothing happened for the last 20 years because you have not done anything. You haven't completed anything. And you don't want the body to be apart from the spirit because you're dead. That's the same thing. Faith without works, it's dead. The body is the works. The faith is the spirit. So if the spirit is separate from the body, it's dead. You know how many times we hear that, that a demonic spirit needs some place to live, to reside in order to operate? It's the same thing. God's spirit needs some place to operate. That's why if you have, if your faith is on a million, it don't matter. Nobody ever saw you do anything. You never did anything. You never built anything. You never wrote anything. You never planted anything. You never established anything. You never said yes to anything. So I, I pray, our prayer today is, Lord, help me to obey. Period. Amen. 
help me to obey whatever is hindering our obedience remove the obstacles remove that which has been holding us back help me to obey I can press into you. I can come into prayer with you. I can pull down the presence of God. I can hum it all day. But if I am not in obedience to you, it does not matter. God, you told me to start this this prayer, this prayer picnic. You told me to start. This, this conference, you told me to start this retreat, you told me to start writing this book or this devotional, you told me to start writing this screenplay, you laid it on my heart to go out and to, to, to minister to the youth and give them programs, you told me to go out and go into rehab, rehab facilities and to nursing homes and minister to those that are seasoned and older in life. And I haven't even started. Help me to obey. You told me to join the worship team. And I haven't even done that yet. Help me to obey. You told me to join the board of my church. And I haven't even done that yet. Help me to obey. You told me to help my supervisor on that project and I, I I haven't even approached them yet. Help me to obey. Move my feelings out of the way. Move my emotions out of the way. Move what I know and my traditions out of the way. Move my behaviors and my habits out of the way and help me to obey. My obedience My life depends on my obedience. My life depends on my obedience. I can pursue you day after day, but my life, my ability to live depends on my obedience. God, and I don't want to be a disobedient disciple. I don't want to be one that does not comply. I don't want to operate in my way. My way brought me to this point. The reason I even came to you was because I needed to surrender and submit to someone that knew better, that knew about me, that knows my my trajectory and knows my destiny and knows the plan that he has for me. My life is dependent on my ability to obey. Not my status, not my title, not, not the people that follow me, not my influence, my life, my ability to live. Is dependent on my obedience to you. Help my spirit to be attuned to hear from you, God, so that as I hear, I react, I move. As I hear from you, I don't delay. I want to be a friend of God. I want to be called righteous unto me, unto you. Help my spirit to be attuned and to be aligned with you, God. That no matter the circumstance, that I will obey. My family can tell me I'm crazy. I will obey. My friends can say that I've changed. I will obey. My job can say that I'm fired. I will obey. You can call me into a deserted place. I will obey.
It's not about me, God. It's about my obedience. Father, so in my trust and in my faith, let them be united with hope and with obedience. That no matter what I see, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, that I will believe God, that I will expect the unexpected from God, and that I will obey God at all costs. I will believe God. I will expect the unexpected from God, and I will obey at all costs. Father, I thank you for releasing this word this morning. God, that you cover those that hear it. You allow them to to experience you in a new way. If they had difficulty in obeying, Father, I pray that they would start from the beginning. Start with small things. Start showing them where their disobedience lies. If it's in rebellion, because they feel as if you're their parent, their parent who they had in the natural, that they did not comply with, when they feel like you're being a parent to them, they now are in rebellion. It's the same response. Show them their triggers. Show them where it is that there is a hesitancy in their obedience. God, I pray that this word would uproot some things. I pray that this word would go before them, Lord God, and just set a tone and an expectation in their spirit that they will obey and comply with you no matter what it is. God, I thank you that you move by your power and you move by your spirit in their lives. Father, that they will see the fruit of their obedience. They will see the fruit of their yes. They will see their fruit of putting their hand to the plow and doing what God has said to do. Lord, and I thank you that they would reap what they sow. They would reap a great harvest. They would reap bountiful blessings just for their obedience. Thank you that they would live a life that would be pure and pleasing in your sight because of their obedience. Lord, and I ask that you go before them this day and that you pave the way Lord, I pray that everyone that's going into service, God, that the Holy Ghost would rest upon their service, that everyone in that building would be attuned to hear the spirit of the living God. And they won't stick to schedules as normal, but they would allow the spirit of God to flow and fall afresh on that place so that they can min- that the spirit can minister to people. I pray, God, that this would be a day of unusual services, unusual circumstances, miracles, signs, and wonders, the supernatural, oh God. Father, move by your power and move by your might. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope that this blessed you guys. You know, today's day 12. We have three more days. We are almost there. You guys have been pushing and going past what you expected of yourself in your fasting time. So be encouraged to keep pursuing God. Everything we do is for the pursuit of God. It's to have relationship with God. It's to be in in the presence of God. It's literally just to be in hand-to-hand walking Like if you can get that vision in your head, I want my hand and God's hand and we are walking and skipping through life. That's what I want. That's my desire. 
is to know God so much so that I can walk with him and talk with him. I can skip with him. I can sit at his feet. I can cry in his lap. He can embrace me. Like that is the relationship that I want. And I pray that you desire the same. So you guys be blessed today. Enjoy your Sundays, however you spend it. And we are gonna prepare for Monday tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning is day 13. Okay. Have an awesome day, guys. Bye.